Good morning, folks. We've got news on the Earth, Sun, and space, with the top story taking place in a specific layer of the atmosphere. There is catch-up to be done as it was a busy weekend, so let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. The last 24 hours on our star were all about the turning of the coronal hull. We still have no sunspots and no solar flares, no CMEs, and the filaments look stable in Earth-facing position, even while the activity at both limbs is increasingly active. Unlike the incoming prominence, this one appears to retain strength as it turns. It'll be noteworthy to see if it has a large CME from a release as it exits the Earth-facing quiet zone and heads for the far side. Solar wind is starting to intensify this morning due to the Earth-facing coronal hole. Its stream arrival is just beginning, as you see on the right, with a jump in phi angle and plasma speed in the top and third panels, respectively. Solar wind should intensify even more over the next 24 to 48 hours, including geomagnetic conditions, which are also nudging upward this morning. The coronal hole stream is expected to last for days, given the longitudinal spread of the opening, and there is little chance for it missing our planet. Minor geomagnetic storms are possible. Word is coming in that the magnitude 5.6 in Japan yesterday, which they are reporting as a 6.1, caused minor damage and some injuries as, for example, one child was thrown out of bed. Aftershocks continued for hours. Meanwhile, we're seeing foreshock and blot echo swarms in the Americas following above average seismicity at the Bolivian transition zone and off the coast of Southern California the last week. Eyes open there. On to a different concern. With major storms coming this week, my old hometown of Pittsburgh saw Route 30 slide out from the last one, displacing residents below. There is so much more precipitation coming at the end of this week, it is not even funny. Now, on to weather modification. I've been concerned about this since their Olympic magic a few years ago when they cleared the skies for their opening ceremony. With water scarcity as the primary stated purpose, there are also rumors of this being a test run for water sequestration on land, sequestration from rising seas to combat them, that is. Now, they're not going to be spraying this out of planes, but pumping it up from burner facilities on the Tibetan slopes that will release silver iodide into the atmosphere to serve as cloud condensation nuclei. That is, all of their release will either be raining back on them in the water or swept through their airways by the wind. Now, while I cannot claim to discredit the chemical and physical science possibility that that would work to make more rain, I would have to ask, would that really be the water you're looking for? This is so oversimplified that I insist you not quote it as an authority source, but if we generally know about using water vapor, dry ice, salts in cloud seeding, or oxides in the stratosphere, here we are generally looking at the salts category, even though we are really not looking at table salt you'd put on your food, and that might even be a bad name for it because not everything in that realm is actually a salt. That category is mostly, however, about the direct application to clouds for the purposes of precipitation facilitation, that is, as opposed to brightening the top layer to increase albedo. The health effects could be tremendously bad on the Chinese people. I suggest you look into the safety profile and some of the toxic effects of silver iodide. We'll just have to wait and see. Lastly, folks, we've got two more cosmology readings for those keeping up. Official Xmas collaboration with a bit of a lump of coal in their stocking, but hey, at least they've come with new constraints on the wimp. We also have a brilliant duo from Barcelona and Princeton explaining why our favorite space constituent could be an explanation for the 21 centimeter radio observation by edges. Could you imagine if dust negated 80% of the cosmology papers from the last three weeks? Hope you can think quickly. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.